Now we'll do some examples for bandwidth estimation and we'll conclude with why are we using FM? If M requires that much of bandwidth, why would somebody use FM? Okay, so quick review of uh, how do we estimate the bandwidth? We have seen Carson's rule. It says that approximate bandwidth will be twice delta F plus PM. And we have represented this in terms of the modulation index beta. And then uh, we have seen that the form, the same formula applies, Carson's rule applies for FM and PM, but the details will be different. So let's start. Now let's start with this example, which is numbered example three. The example says, estimate the bandwidth of the FM signal and the bandwidth of the PM signal for the modulating signal M of T shown in the diagram. So we would like to use this as the message. And we are told that KF and KP are given by the following values. So then it says repeat the problem if the amplitude of the message is doubled. So instead of going from minus one to one, it's going to be from minus two to plus two. So let's start. We usually start with um, if it's a wideband FM or if it's FM in general, we start by Carson's rule. Setting Carson's rule, it says two times delta F plus B, where B is the bandwidth of the message. So there are two components to be known. What's delta F and what's the bandwidth of the message? Now, what is the bandwidth of this message? This is part of the solution. And what is delta F? Recall that delta F for the case of uh, FM, okay, if you want delta F in Hertz, you divide by two by. So here we have, it's KF times MP. The maximum value for the frequency deviation is KF times MP. And we divide by two by to get it in terms of uh, Hertz. Now, the value of KF is given in red from the question. We divide by two by. The peak of the message, MP, as can be seen from here, it's a symmetric message and the peak is equal to one. So how do you get MP? It's from the question, from the diagram, it's one. Substitution gives you 100 kilohertz. So the maximum frequency deviation is going to be, or the frequency deviation is going to be 100 kilohertz. For the bandwidth of the message, to find the bandwidth of the message, we need to see the signal in frequency. If this signal is periodic, it means we can use Fourier transform. This might take some time, but I'm just sharing with you the answer. This signal can be represented as sum of cosines. And the, the period here to go from one value to itself is 2 times 10 raised to the power minus 4, which means the fundamental frequency will be 1 over t, not 1 over the fundamental period, which equal to 5 kilohertz. The fundamental frequency of this signal is 5 kilohertz. If you want it in radians, you multiply by 2 by, and that's going to be 10,000 by. But this is, not the, this is not the bandwidth, this is just the fundamental frequency. If you look at the Fourier series, you'll find that the value of C in this coefficient will be cosine this frequency, cosine multiples of these frequencies, all the even harmonics are zero. I want to go from here to here, surely you need to spend some time. But uh, we're, going to we're going to say that this is given. Otherwise, you need to start from Fourier series. Now, uh, for odd values of N, we need to substitute this. For even, it's always zero for even harmonics. So the message can be written instead of given, being given by the, this uh, triangular function, we can represent it, represent it using Fourier series as sum of cosines. The coefficients come from here for the odd values. So we have 5k, and then which is the fundamental frequency, then 3 5k. Remember the even is zero, and then we have five and so on. It keeps going. Notice that the amplitude start to decrease as we go on. And if you compare the fundamental, if you compare the amplitudes relative to the fundamental amplitude, you'll find that uh, we have one, then of course all, all even harmonics are zeros. The amplitude becomes one over nine, one over 25, because it's related to one over n squared. So as we go to three, it becomes one over nine, to five, one over 25. So the amplitude reduces dramatically. And if the amplitude reduces this way, then the power will be reduced proportional to n cube or n raised to the power four, sorry, rather. The reason is that the power is proportional to the square of the amplitude. Remember, if you have a cosine, the power is amplitude square over two. So if you assume that your first harmonic is 100%, 
Relative to that, the power in the third harmonic will be just 1.21%, which is 1 over 81. And then 1 over 25 squared becomes the power in the fifth harmonic is even less than 0.2%. So it makes sense that if we ignore the fifth harmonic and you just stop at three, uh, the third harmonic, the amount of power lost relative to the uh, first harmonic is very small. So we might all right, now let's continue with the example, keeping in mind that the bandwidth of the signal is approximately, uh, we just found the example, uh, is approximately three times the fundamental frequency, which is 15 kilohertz. Now, going to Kirsten's rule, the bandwidth of the FM signal is twice or two times delta F plus B. We're substituting from the previous slide, and this is the bandwidth that we have taken. So the total is 230 kilohertz. Of course, this is just an estimate, approximation. Now, we can do, we can get the same answer by uh, using the other for formulation of, of the Carson's rule, using the modulation index beta, which is delta F over B, 100 or 15. Of course, you substitute, if you substitute, you expect the same answer. It's just another way of writing. Now, let's go to the second part, which is finding the bandwidth of the PM signal. That requires knowing the derivative of the signal. So um, try to get the derivative of the signal. Most likely you're going to do a mistake. So you might pause the video and sketch the derivative of the signal. It's expected to be a square wave, but you might get mistakes when you find the values. So try to sketch it, get the values correct, and then compare your answer. You may pause the video now. Now, the derivative of this, as you might expect, when we have increasing voltage, it's a positive value. When it's going down, it's a negative value. But finding the exact magnitude, you need to find two points, for example, from here to here, delta y divided by delta x. So delta y here is 2 divided by delta x. The change here is not this number, it's half of this. Huh? So you get the answer to be 20,000. Similarly, if you want to go down, you pick two points, then delta y divided by delta x, you get minus 20,000. It's 20,000 or minus 20,000. So now we are ready to find delta f for the case of mp, for the case of p and message. If you substitute this, this is given in the question, the green kp, the, the constant, and now we found the peak of the derivative. So we got 50 kilohertz. Now, for the case of the bandwidth substitution, remember that delta F is now 50K, and now the bandwidth is 15. If you substitute, you get 130 kilohertz. Now, we cannot make conclusion that 130 kilohertz is smaller than 230 kilohertz, because this makes a difference between the highest value and between KF and KB. Those are two different numbers. We cannot just compare right away. Again, for the case of PM, we can use the other form of the modulation index, the other form for Carson's rule. Beta is delta F over B, and of course, we should get the same answer. Once more, this does not mean that FM requires more than bandwidth than PM, because they are, they are totally different things. We have used different constants. Now, the, the last part of the example says, what if we double the amplitude of the message? If you double the amplitude of the message, Okay, okay, this is what you get. Instead of 1 and minus 1, you get 2 and minus 2. So back to our questions. The bandwidth of the message does not change. What changes is uh, the following. What changes is delta F for the case of FM, right? And if you take the derivative, of course, you expect that there's going to be a change. So this is going to be uh, doubled and it's going to be doubled. So we've got 430 and 230 approximately. This is doubling because it's much, lar much larger than the original, uh, than the bandwidth of the message. We can make the following conclusion, that doubling the signal amplitude roughly in this example at least doubles the bandwidth of the FM for, uh, double the bandwidth of the modulated signal, whether it's FM or PM. So doubling the signal amplitude roughly doubles the bandwidth of FM and PM signals. Now, let's move to the next, next example, which is what is the, what if we double the period, the time, instead of doubling the amplitude? We can see here uh, on the slide 
that doubling the amplitude will result on having here the period is going to be 4 times 10 raised to the power minus 4 instead of being 2 times 10 raised to the power minus 4. All right, so doubling the time will make the signal slower, will make the period larger, which means the frequency smaller. And going back to what we have done before, we expect the bandwidth to become half of the original one because the fundamental frequency, period is doubled, frequency is half, and then we get 7.5k instead of 15. How about the delta F? Delta F is not going to change because delta F depends on the peak, MP. And we can see here that the peak value of the message is still the same. So the answer is 12, 215 kilohertz. For the case of PM, okay, we have the following. Of course, the bandwidth of the message is going to be just like we explained, 7.5k. However, delta F is going also to change. Why? Because delta F in the case of PM depends on MP, depends on the derivative. Okay, so it depends on the derivative, MP dot. And of course, MP dot here, when you take the derivative of the message, you expect to get uh, a different derivative. The slope has changed. So we get slower message, slower slope by a factor of half. Now, this is going to be, uh, the, band, the delta F is now, going, instead of being 50K, is going to be 25K. So the reduction is in both, we got 65 kilohertz. We can make the following conclusion, at least in this example, time expansion of the message has very little effect on the FM bandwidth, but it has the PM bandwidth. Okay, the, this verifies that PM spectrum is strongly dependent on the spectrum of M of T. The spectrum of the phase modulated is strongly dependent on the spectrum of M of T because it depends on its derivative, so it depends on its change, on its spectrum. Now, here is the last example. It says, example 5, uh, an angle modulated signal with carrier frequency omega C equal to 2 by times 10 raised to the power minus 10 raised to the power 5 is described by the following equation. Okay, it's, it says GEM. Okay, it's an angle modulated si si signal. It does not specify whether it's FM or PM. Okay, it's angle modulated. Of course, we cannot use angle AM because this would be confu confused with the, with the case of amplitude modulation. So we use E to stand for exponential modulation. Remember that angle modulated, angle signal, angles can be represented in exponential format. So we call it GEM. So the question did not specify whether it's FM or PM, but says find the power of the modulated signal, find the frequency deviation, find the deviation ratio beta, find the phase deviation, and estimate the bandwidth of, of this signal. Once more, find the power of the modulated signal. If you want, you can pause the video, you can try solve it yourself before we go on to the answers. So the power is independent of the message, it's amplitude squared over 2, so we get 50. Then we need delta F, beta, and, uh, and um, the phase deviation. To find the frequency deviation, remember that the frequency is the derivative of the angle, so we'll differentiate the angle, and then we'll find the maximum. So let's proceed with the next slide. All right, now in this slide, I'm repeating the, the signal in the question so that we can follow up with the answer. So the first part is the power. Power is the amplitude squared over 2. We got 10 squared over 2, which is 50. For the case of finding the frequency deviation, first we find the instantaneous frequency, which is the derivative of the angle. So if you differentiate this, you get the following expression. Remember the derivative of sine is cosine. And derivative of the angle is 3,000 times 5, 15,000. Remember that here we have a by, here there is no by. So this is basically the der derivative. If you want to, to get the maximum of this, the deviation, you of course ignore the center frequency, and we'd like to find the deviation, the maximum of this. Cosine and cosine will have a maximum at t equal to zero, and we get the sum of these two expressions. If you want the maximum in hertz, then you also divide by two by, because this is the angular frequency. So delta F is, you take the maximum of this, divide by two by, and we got the answer. So this is the maximum frequency deviation. Now, if you want to find beta, by definition, you should know the definition of beta. It's delta F over the bandwidth. What's the bandwidth of this signal? Is this FM or PM? We don't know. But what we know is that the message or its integration or its derivative 
is going to have the same bandwidth. So we are not sure is this M of T or is this A of T, is this proportional to M of T or A of T. But all we know is that the bandwidth of this is the maximum frequency. So the maximum frequency here you divide by 2 pi, you get the, the, the frequency of this tone. You take divide by 2 pi, you get 1000. Clearly this is more than this. So the frequency of these two tones together is the highest frequency, which is 2000 by in hertz. Okay, in hertz it's going to be 2000 by divided by 2 by, and I got uh, 1000, which is the number here. So if you divide, you get 12.387. This is the amount of the freq frequency, this is the modulation index. Next, we move to the, he's not asking the frequency de deviation, he's now asking about the phase deviation. So in phase deviation, we don't need to take the derivative. What's the peak value of this? What's the maximum value of this? That doesn't seem to be a small uh, and easy answer. You don't need to differentiate, so we need just to find the maximum of these two. If you want to find the maximum of sum of two sines, it's not as easy as finding the maximum of two cosines. Because the two cosines at t equal to zero, you can uh, get the sum of the two amplitudes. They all peak at t equal to zero. But sum of two signs is not as easy. But luckily, because one of these frequencies is multiple of pi and the other is not multiple of pi, there is no relation between the two. So they cannot be related. So at one instant in time, we'll get the sum of the two amplitudes. So in case the ratio between the two frequencies is not a rational number, I can assume that the sum of the two will have a peak of the sum of the two amplitudes, which is 5 plus 10. Have you had by inside here? Then it's not going to be as easy. So the answer is now 15 by radians. For the bandwidth estimation of this EM signal, of this exponential signal, I'm applying Carson's rule, 2 times delta F plus B, and that's the answer. Delta F is what we have found here. Beta, uh, sorry, the bandwidth is 1,000, so you get 1,000 plus 12,000 and times 2, almost 26,000 hertz. Uh, so this is the exact answer of the approximate uh, estimation. Note that we did not need to know that this is FM or PM, to solve this problem. It's just being exponential or angle modulated. Now, let's conclude by stating why do we, if the bandwidth of FM signal turn out to be much greater than uh, the bandwidth of uh, AM signals, why would somebody still use FM signals? What's the advantage of FM signals? The first thing, FM signals allow you to exchange bandwidth for quality although it consumes more bandwidth, but in fact, the signal-to-noise ratio is proportional to the square of the transmitted bandwidth. So if we make the bandwidth doubled, you get four times improvement in signal-to-noise ratio. This was not possible AM. AM has a specific bandwidth, double sideband, single sideband. We cannot just go beyond that. The formulation does not allow for this. FM signals has constant amplitude, which is fixed power. The power is independent of the message. This is an advantage. FM signals are immune to nonlinearity, and there are possible uh, advantages that we can think of. Those are the things that we have covered, and you might be able to think of other reasons why we would use FM. Thank you very much.